Thank you for your service. You have a tough job. We talked about this almost seven weeks ago when we met. We talked about the case being difficult. You were asked if you could be fair and impartial and reserve judgment until the end. We were getting close to the end. You were asked You were asked to be patient and attentive while putting your life on hold. Again, thank you. Archibald thanks the prosecutors and says, we're small town lawyers. We're not from Boise. We're called opposing counsel, but we do respect each other. We respect the jobs we have to do. Archibald says he does not have a PowerPoint. Archibald says, who is Lori Fallow? What happened? Where did it happen? When did it happen? Why did it happen? That's what you've been asked to figure out. That is what you need to be convinced of beyond a reasonable doubt. Lori was born in California and turns 50 next month. She got married right out of high school, got divorced, went to beauty school, got married and divorced again. She worked hard as a single mother. Archibald explains about Lori marrying and divorcing Joseph Ryan. The kids needed protecting from Joseph Ryan. Now he talks about Charles Fallow and their marriage. You heard JJ had medical issues when he was born and Charles and Lori was a good fit for him. They loved him and they cared for him. Then the story about Lori Vallow changes dramatically in October 2018. Who is Chad Daybell? Archibald asks. Lori reads some of his books and Archibald explains all about the religious teachings in the 14, in the 144,000 evil spirits, light in dark ratings, zombies, Jesus being in the temple, quite a remarkable change in Lori from people who knew her. What the heck is going on? How can this be? Archibald goes on to say, one year after meeting Chad, four people are dead. Archibald reminds jurors they shouldn't consider Charles' death in this case as Lori is not facing charges here in Idaho for the death. I talked to you weeks ago about paying attention to who does what. Pay attention to burden of proof. We don't have to provide any witnesses or evidence and my client doesn't have to testify. You can't hold that against us. Pretty soon, six of you are going to have to get bumped and that's too bad. The judge is going to pick numbers out of a hat to see who stays and who goes. I think the thought was during a long trial, someone was going to get sick or have issues at home or a death in the family. Something is going to happen that some of you are not going to show up. All of you showed up. To you alternates, thanks again for your service, and I'm sorry you won't get to deliberate with your fellow jurors. You've been able to see my client, and you've been able to see the evil glare she gets from the audience. You've been able to see the witnesses and the evidence. You've been able to hear my client six times during this trial. He then lists the pieces of evidence, the phone calls, body camera footage, the podcast. Archibald says he respects the state's argument that this is about money, sex, and power. But he says Charles Vallow was making four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. He says that Lori was receiving far less in Social Security money after Charles' death. So what is the point of the death? Then she she moves on to Chad, who can't sell enough stupid books about the end of the world, so Tammy has to support him. So Lori wanted to ditch Charles, who makes four to five hundred thousand dollars a year, and go to Chad, who makes thirty thousand dollars a year and she wanted to do that for money. Now Archibald talks about power. In the year Chad convinced her she was a goddess, how many converts did Lori have? Zero, a big fat zero. How many converts did Chad have? I count six, Melanie, Audrey, etc. Archibald says this is this great cause of saving the world and gathering up the 144,000. Chad got six and Lori got zero. Doing some simple math, Chad has... 143,994 people left to gather before Jesus comes. At the rate of six people a year, that will take Chad 24,000 years to get this army assembled. The math is ridiculous. Um, People have sex outside of marriage every day. He compared the physical attractiveness between Chad and Charles. Archibald says it wasn't about sex. She's reading his books during a hard time in her life, and this guy is telling her she's a goddess. And by the way, we've already been married in a previous life, so it's not really cheating. And we were best friends with Jesus, and Jesus approves, so everything is okay. That's quite the pickup line by Chad to Lori, and it worked. Pretty scary that the pickup line from Chad to Lori worked. 
Archibald says there was no doubt the children are dead, but did Lori do it? You've heard 60 witnesses and seen hundreds of exhibits, county police, local police, state police, federal police, and lots of resources. I want to review some of these exhibits with you. Archibald says the first witness was Kay Woodcock. She described Charles and Lori as the all-American family. She trusted her brother and she trusted Lori. They each had two kids and then they adopted one together. Kay said something changed in late 2018 and early 2019. Brandon then testified and said Charles and Lori were great. I love that family like my own. But then all of the end of the world talk ramped up and things got weird. Archibald recalls Officer Ray Hermoso's testimony. He testified that Chad Daybell, when the police showed up, called his lawyer. And what's Chad doing? He's outside looking over his shoulder. Then he sped away and got arrested. So when Chad was looking over his shoulder, what's that inference? That Chad knew what was in his backyard? He knew that time was short for him. Archibald says on the jail phone call from Chad, Lori did not know the kids were in the backyard. Chad knew, but does she know that Chad and Alex stuffed her kids in Chad's backyard? Go listen to it again and make your determination. Archibald goes on to describe the weird religious babble that really does not make sense. In America, you can believe how you want, but you can't go killing people, so what are they talking about? What is all this religious talk about? Archibald tells the jurors to listen to the call from Melanie Gibb where Lori says the kids are safe and happy. Does she know Chad and Alex were out in the backyard together? Remember all the GPS data? Let's not there. Lori's not in the backyard when Chad and Alex are. She's not coming and going from Chad's property on those days. She's not there. They are calling and texting her. Are they texting about today's the day we are going to kill some people? We don't know that. Maybe they were texting about running an errand. Do you want a real Coke or a Diet Coke? Look for the lack of evidence of who's doing what. He brings up Chad's blessing to Alex. To me, it's craziness. Opening the portals of time, third creation, fourth creation, great warriors, exaltation, but came back in the fifth creation. What the heck is Chad talking about? He's the leader of his new church. He calls himself a patriarch. Just goofy stuff. Archibald references Colby's testimony where he said Lori was a good mom. He mentions the phone call from Lori, from Colby to Lori and says, it was so painful. Archibald gets choked up. It's just so painful. Archibald talking about April Ryan's testimony of Lori trying to recruit her to join the 144,000. April declined to join in. Archibald talks about Lori hiring a babysitter to watch JJ. If Lori has all these plans to kill her kid, why hire a babysitter and bring her over and introduce her and why check JJ into school? You're going to kill your kid next week. Why do that? Because Lori didn't have a plan, the state wants you to think this, that this was Lori's plan to kill her kids. Archibald says on Lori's rental application for her Rexburg home, she listed JJ and Tylee as her kids. Why tell everyone you had two kids? Why enroll them in school? Why hire a babysitter? The only thing that makes sense to me is if she didn't have a plan. She wanted to be with Chad. They were obviously having an affair. Chad told her all the time about light and dark things, but there was no plan to buy Lori to kill her kids. Archibald says Lori lied to protect Chad, her lover, her eternal, and how many were world's companion. How can someone have that much control over you? We've heard how reason and common sense go out the window sometimes when religious principles are involved. They say she's cunningly come up, coming up with a plan to knock off all these people. Why not get, go get insurance policies on the kids? She didn't go get an insurance policy on the kids. Does that tell you she wasn't planning to kill her kids or she would have gotten policies? Archibald references Summer Shiflet's testimony and the phone call. I have supported you your whole life. Chad has lied to you. Chad has deceived you. Archibald quotes, then he says, Alex was a 16 year old stuck in an adult body because of a car accident. Archibald quotes, Summer's testimony of Lori being a good mom, getting along with Tylee and Lori never agreeing to kill her kids. 
Archibald talks about the photos that I'm sure are burned in your brain, the autopsy photos. Before transitioning to the hair found on the duct tape wrapped around JJ's body, is that a smoking gun? No, not at all. Why not? Because decomposition fluid was also in that bag. The pajamas were also in that bag. Kid socks were also in that bag. A blanket was also in that bag. To say Lori is the killer because they found a piece of her hair on duct tape, that's not true. I would hope all of you who are mothers, I hope your hair is somewhere on your kids' pajama socks or blanket. Archibald brings up Tammy's death. That death is up in the air. Was she even murdered? Was it a natural death? To believe she was murdered, Chad is so smooth that he convinced a county coroner, a deputy coroner, and a police officer that it was all natural causes and convinced his kids. Remember the kids showed up. Oh my, what happened to mom? Chad convinced them all. Sorry kids, mom's died in her sleep. Okay dad, you're being asked to convict Lori on killing Tammy when Lori's in Hawaii. You're being asked to convict Lori on killing Tammy when it isn't even a homicide. Archibald talks about the prophecy Chad told the neighbors about, that Tammy would die before she's 50. Wouldn't Tammy also know about this prophecy? Couldn't that be why she increased her life insurance? Tammy was still with Chad even though he was so nutty. Archibald brings up Audrey's testimony and says he thought she was making up stuff. What did we learn about her? That she was married to Jesus? That's kind of cool. That I'll follow you to five different states, even though I didn't really follow you. Archibald apologizes to the jury for getting a little excited with Audrey because he didn't believe her. You have to sort through that and decide what is credible and not credible with these witnesses. What is real and what's imaginary. Archibald says Lori kept asking Chad what was happening because Chad's been to heaven and he knows. He brings up the fact that Chad would change percentage ratings for people because he's making it up as he goes. He can't remember if it's 0% when people die or 100% when people die. What's going on in Chad's brain? You and I wouldn't believe it, but some people do. Some people follow, relig- follow religious leaders when, they're, when others don't. Was it proven who killed Tylee? No, but Alex and Chad were in the backyard. Chad had said, Tylee doesn't like me. I'm guessing Chad and Alex on Tylee. They didn't prove that Lori conspired. Of the 15,000 texts they have in evidence, show me one from Lori that says, so when are you killing Tylee? Was it proven who killed JJ? No, but Chad got in a scratch fight with JJ the day before. Maybe those were the scratches on JJ's neck. Alex was only at the grave site for JJ for 17 minutes. That's not enough time to find a board, find rocks, and line them up. I'm guessing Alex had help from Chad. Of the 15,000 texts you have in evidence, show me one where Lori is part of that conspiracy. When are you killing JJ, by the way? There is no such text. Why can't people escape religious leaders? Why can't Lori escape and get back to her good mom life? Lori is not a leader in Chad's new church, the Church of the Fireborn. Lori so wants to testify of Jesus. She wants to tell the world how much she loves Jesus. She wants to tell you that she personally met him on more than one occasion. But Lori is a leader or a follower of Chad. But is Lori a leader or a follower of Chad? She so wants to be a leader, but she's not leading anyone. She's following Chad. She thinks Chad is following Jesus, but he's not. He's unfortunately being led by the storm, not the first guy to be led by the storm. People who follow Jesus do good things. They are respectful, kind, and serve others. If someone wants you to walk a mile, walk two miles with them. Treat people like you want to be treated. Judge people like you want to be judged. Since you are, since you are a sinner, be kind and forgive forgiving of sinners. That's the Jesus we know. That's the Jesus Lori knew. That's the Jesus Lori taught her children about. That's the Jesus Lori knew until she met Chad Daybell. No one here thinks Lori actually killed anyone. That's why she's being charged with conspiracy. So they want you to be convinced that she's part of this plan, that there's a specific plan to kill. If you find her guilty, will that bring the kids back? Nope. You can't be concerned about that. 
you need to be concerned with following the law and the lack of evidence. If there's anything we learned about a storm, you can hide from a storm, you can seek shelter from a storm. Lori spent her whole life protecting her children. Thank you again. Archibald is done.